As a shake hand player, there are two grip options available to you. The first is the standard shake hand grip. With this grip, there will be no need to adjust after serving, so you'll always be ready to play the next stroke. You'll also have good control over your racket. Realize that the restricted range of motion in the wrist will limit your potential to apply spin on the ball. To solve this, you can loosen your bottom three fingers on the handle while retaining contact. This looser shake hand grip provides an increased range of motion in your wrist, allowing you to snap it more to apply greater spin on the ball if desired. It also gives you more options for service variations and deceptions. This grip is used for the forehand backspin and no spin, backhand and tomahawk serves. The pendulum service grip is where the racket is held loosely between only your thumb and index finger. Simply curl your bottom three fingers behind the handle and ensure your index finger lies flat against the backhand side, pointing towards the tip. The benefit of holding the racket this way is that you have a greater range of wrist motion and can snap it faster. This gives you more options for placement and spin, making it easier to deceive your opponent. The pendulum service grip requires more practice to be able to perform a serve consistently. Realize you must also quickly adjust your grip back to shake hand before playing your next stroke. This can be difficult for novice players, but will come with dedicated practice. This grip is used for the forehand pendulum and forehand reverse pendulum serves. Keeping your serves low to the net will give your opponent the most difficulty on the return. A common problem for beginners is serving the ball with too much bounce, so that their opponent can easily attack it. Here are some tips to keep your serves nice and low to the net. Toss the ball lower. The higher you toss the ball, the more speed it has when coming down and contacting your racket. This extra speed often makes the ball bounce higher. Make contact with the ball as low as possible. Making contact with the ball too far above net height will produce a ball that bounces high. Contact the ball more horizontally instead of up or down. Upwards contact will cause the ball to rise in the air more and downwards contact will propel the ball into the table with extra speed both making it bounce higher. Horizontal contact will reduce the vertical speed of the ball into the table, thus causing less of a vertical bounce. The opposite problem, serving the ball into the net, is also common. So try the opposite of what is suggested here if hitting the net is an issue for you when serving. Controlling the depth of your serves is imperative. It's important to master both short and long placement. A short serve is difficult to attack, forcing your opponent to lean in to play the ball. And a long, fast serve within a few inches of the end line of your opponent will surprise them and force a cramped stroke. A short serve should be short enough that if given the chance will bounce twice on the opponent's side of the table. Thus the term double bounce serve. Ideally, you want to serve that after the first bounce on your opponent's side comes as close to their end line as possible. This type of serve is too short to loop and too long to flick, causing hesitation in your opponent and ultimately a weak version of whatever they attempt. At pro levels, this is the primary type of serve. Some tips to execute short serves are to increase the amount of backspin and or sidespin that you apply. More backspin slows down the projection and sidespin will make the ball curve more, 
causing it to travel more and drop further while still remaining short. Decrease the amount of speed that you put on the ball. This is done by slowing down the speed at which you contact it. Applying backspin or sidespin also helps decrease the speed. Aim for the ball to bounce closer to the net in your court without a lot of force. Serving a ball that bounces too close to your end line will make it difficult to keep short. For a long serve to be effective, it must be fast and placed within a few inches of your opponent's end line. Otherwise, expect a very strong attack to come back at you. This type of precision comes with practice, but once mastered will be a very powerful weapon in your arsenal. To execute deep serves, you want the ball's first bounce to hit your side of the table close to the end line and you want to contact it with greater force. The ability to unleash serves loaded with spin is crucial. Knowing how to apply spin means you'll also know how to vary spin, making you a very dynamic player, able to unleash a wide variety of serves. Here are some tips on how to apply more spin to your serves. Brush the edge of the ball rather than hitting it straight on. The more you brush the ball by contacting the edge, the more spin you will produce. Use the sweet spot of the racket to make contact with the ball. This area of the racket moves faster when the wrist is snapped and will also cause the ball to stay in contact with the racket longer, creating more spin. Ensure you're using your wrist and forearm together to explosively strike the ball. By coming down fast with your forearm and snapping your wrist at contact, you will create lethal spin on your serves. Use your body, arm, and wrist in unison. While control is primary over speed, there will come a time when you'll have to work on the speed of your serves to take your game to the next level. To apply maximum speed to your serves, use less brush and apply more forward force. You will sacrifice some spin doing this, but the end result will be a serve with much more power. Contact the ball more horizontally instead of up or down. Upwards contact will cause the ball to rise in the air more, and downwards contact will propel the ball into the table, both making it bounce higher and killing your speed. Horizontal contact will create a fast forward moving serve. Make contact with the ball as low as possible. Making contact with the ball too far above net height will produce a ball that bounces high, again killing your speed. You are in total control on the serve, so you must approach it with a strategic mindset. You never want to mindlessly serve the ball. You've got to be tactical and ruthless. Here are some strategies to keep in mind when serving. Test out your various serves early on in the match to confirm what is effective. Stay alert to what is and is not working and adjust accordingly. Once you discover a weakness in your opponent, focus on exploiting it without becoming predictable. You avoid being predictable by using a variety of serves. Mixing up your serves will keep your opponent on their toes and always guessing. Deception is a very important aspect of the serve. Being able to serve in a way that deceives your opponent will create confusion and errors in judgment, causing them to make mistakes. The ultimate goal is the ability to produce different spins and placements without changing the appearance of your service motion. This is possible by contacting the ball at different spots on your racket and by last moment changes in wrist snap. This will be covered in detail during the drills. You can also fake your follow through in a direction other than that at contact to add further deception. Here you can see this player fake an upwards motion of his serve after contact in slow motion. Of course, in a real game, this is hard to distinguish 
and can be very effective at deceiving your opponent. As you set up to serve, always look at your opponent. Is their position unbalanced? Are they leaning or cheating in any way towards one side? Do they look like they're ready to attack or defend? Are they standing back from the table or up close? Look for holes and hit to them. Keep in mind that if you put heavy spin on the ball, you'll often have to deal with that spin on the return. So serve in a way that dictates the kind of returns you want and allows you to play to your strengths.